So welcome. Uh, my name is Yolana Wassersag. I am Assistant Registrar Student Recruitment at the University of King's College. My name actually is Yolana. I know it says Julie Green underneath the uh, video of me on your screen. Julie is the Registrar at King's and I'm logged into her Zoom account, which is why it looks like I'm her, but I actually am Yolana. And I'm here with two of our current students, Chris and Antoinette. I'll let them introduce them themselves. Antoinette, do you want to start and say hi? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, so I'm a second year student here at King's. Um, I'm from Halifax. Uh, I lived in residence my first year and currently I do a lot of theater stuff. Uh, I work in the registrar's office and uh, oh, my degree is in philosophy and contemporary studies, which is one of the upper year programs at King's. Awesome. Chris, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, my name is Chris. I'm a fifth year student. I've been hanging around for a little while at King's. Um, I am a, I'm currently doing a combined honors degree in early modern studies, which is one of the very cool King's Upper Years programs that Yolana and I have both done. Uh, and uh, theater studies, which is actually also Yoli. That was your combination as well, right? Yep, we had did the same degree. We did the same degree. <laughs> Um, and I have been at King's for five years, I said that, and uh, I do also a lot of theater stuff, and I also work in the registrar's office at King's, uh, and I also worked in residence at King's for two years. So now that we've introduced ourselves, I'll just give you a little sense of what we're gonna do here together. Um, first of all, I really wanna thank you for joining me in this virtual space today. I know we all have a lot on our minds right now. We're digesting a lot of news. We have a lot of things to be uh, worried about or anxious about. And the fact that you're spending some of your time with me this afternoon, that's really generous of you. And, and uh, it's really great to be here um, and to be able to provide some answers to your questions about the university. So I'm going to share my screen with you and open up a PowerPoint presentation that we've um, put together for this open house. Here we are. Hopefully you can all see that now. We'll just enter full screen mode. Um, so the plan for today is that uh, I'll give you some information about Kings. Chris and Antoinette will jump in where they have relevant information to share. And then we'll just open the floor for a Q&A. So there's a little chat box feature in um, Zoom that you can use to type in questions. And we'll do our best to answer all the questions that you have. Um, we'll be on here for about, about an hour. So let's get started because there's a lot of information to go through. Um, so as I said, this is us. I'm Yolana, Assistant Registrar. I'm here with Antoinette and Chris, who are both current students. And they're also both peer advisors at the university, which means they are available to help students um, with course registration, with course selection, uh, understanding how to plan their degree. We have full-time academic advisors that do that job, but we also hire incredible students like Antoinette and Chris uh, to help out um, and field questions. So that's uh, some of their expertise. So let's start with some of the basics. The University of King's College is partners and neighbors with Dalhousie University. So when Chris and Antoinette were introducing themselves, they talked about programs they're taking at King's like contemporary studies and early modern studies, as well as programs they're taking at Dalhousie, which is our neighbor. If you are a student who comes to King's, you get the benefits and joys of Dalhousie along with it. It's a package deal. We are two universities with a very close partnership. We share different academic faculties and we also share other types of resources. So in terms of the academics that we share, we share our entire faculty of arts and social sciences. And so that would include any academic program like English, history, international development studies, law, justice and society, sociology and social anthropology, gender and women's studies, theater studies, film studies, just to name a few. Those are all part of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. Uh, they, we also share an entire Faculty of Science. So if you're out there listening right now and you want to study something like marine biology, environmental sciences, uh, economics, any of those, physics, chemistry, um, all of those are part of our shared Faculty of Science with Dalhousie. And so if you're a King student, you have access to all of those programs. We also share a bunch of our resources. So over at King's, we have our own wonderful gym, which is where the King's Blue Devils will play. It's a great little gym and you can be in your residence room, roll out of bed and in 30 seconds, you can be there. 
But if you want to work out in a larger facility, you also have access to the Dalplex Fitness Center, which has a rock climbing wall and all sorts of other incredible equipment and classes. Uh, you have access to the Health and Wellness Center at Dal, the International Student Center, if you're an international student filled with great resources, or if you want to have an international experience, like a study abroad program, the international center is where you'll go. Our students also have access to resources and supports at Dalhousie, like the Black Student Advising Center, the Indigenous Student Center, and so much more. So uh, that's what I'm going to say about Dalhousie for right now. But when we open up the Q&A, if you have more questions about Dal, we can answer those as well as questions about Kings. Because as I said before, um, the partnership between our two universities is a pretty unique and exciting thing. We always want to be able to highlight how special it is to be able to have both a small and tight-knit university and also a more comprehensive research institution at the same time. Um, and I just wanted to acknowledge that I know a lot of you out there who are watching this webinar, some of you are in grade 12, you've already done a ton of research about Kings, maybe you've already applied. So for you, some of this information might be a repeat of things you already know. But I also wanted to mention that I know there's a bunch of grade 11 or even grade 10 students out there. So I just wanted to make sure that I'm covering the basics. And by the way, if you're listening to this right now and you're a parent or guardian of a student, welcome. We're psyched to have you here too. You're also allowed to answer, ask questions. Um, we're excited to hear from you also. So I'm just gonna move on to the next slide. And let's talk about the programs that are available at King's that you can take. Um, so we offer four types of degrees at the University of King's College, arts, science, journalism, and music. Uh, those are full degrees, a Bachelor of Arts, a Bachelor of Science, a Bachelor of Journalism, and a Bachelor of Music. Typically, they take four to five years to complete a, a full bachelor degree. Um, but one of the special things we offer at King's is that many of our students will start the first year of their four-year pathway with something we do called uh, FYP. It stands for Foundation Year Program. I did FIP. Chris and Antoinette did it as well. Um, FIP is a pretty special and unique thing at King's. It's a totally different way of structuring the first year of your degree. Many of our students choose to start their degree this way. It's probably one of the most popular and special things uh, that makes King's a little different from other universities. No matter what kind of degree you're doing with us, whether it's going to be an arts degree, a science degree, a journalism or music degree, you can start your degree with the Foundation Year Program. And our Bachelor of Journalism Honors Program, which I'm going to talk more about later, FIP is a built-in part of that journalism program. So if you're going to do the four-year journalism degree with us, you're going to be doing FIP as part of your first year. So what actually is FIP? That's like, I think, the most important thing to describe. So FIP is about small classes like you see here. Um, we spend a lot of time in these tight-knit discussion groups. At King's we call them tutorials. They're capped at 15 students maximum. So it's a very tight-knit group of students that you're learning with. You're on the same schedule as everyone else who's in first year. You're all exploring the same ideas at the same time. And the regular day in the life of a foundation year program student is going to be built around basically two types of classes. A lecture in the morning, where all the first year students are together in the lecture hall, and a tutorial or discussion group like you see here in the afternoon. And with those groups, you're going to be moving through a bunch of different ideas and learning together on the same schedule with your professors there to guide you. In the foundation year program, you're also kind of clumping together a bunch of the first year credits you need into one integrated class. So instead of spending your first year of university taking multiple different classes that are all in different buildings, different departments, different professors, different deadlines for your assignments, in the foundation year program, everything is integrated. So your whole first year, almost every credit you need to continue on is going to be uh, achieved by doing the foundation year program. The other really important thing to know about the Foundation Year Program is that it's built around books. We love books and ideas at King's. Um, we do not read textbooks or secondary sources really in the Foundation Year Program. We're not going to read other people's ideas 
about great and interesting works of literature, history, philosophy. Instead, we read those works themselves. So what you can see in front of you on the screen is a selection of some of the things that our first year students would typically read in foundation year. And this uh, reading curriculum is cool for a lot of reasons, but one of my favorite things about it is that it's interdisciplinary. So when I say interdisciplinary, what I mean is that we are going to mix up a lot of different subjects and explore them together. So you might see, oh, sorry about that. Um, philosophers like Plato, you might see poets like Dante. You're going to encounter people who are writing about politics and government, uh, like Marx and Engels, who wrote the Communist Manifesto, Machiavelli, who wrote The Prince. There will be theater in there, Marlowe, Shakespeare, those are examples of playwrights. You're going to be discovering science and scientists. Uh, people like Sir Isaac Newton, Darwin, Galileo are going to get covered in the Foundation Year program. You'll encounter um, people who are writing about race, like Souls of Black Folk, which is an incredible read, or people who are writing about gender, like Simone de Beauvoir's The Second Sex. So a wide range of different texts. Chris, Antoinette, did you have a favorite from when you did FIP or a book that you particularly loved? Um, I particularly loved Mary Cavendish's uh, The Blazing World. It was very odd. Um, yeah, it just after like, obviously, like I really like philosophy. I'm doing it as part of my degree. Um, but just having that little story in there um, with all these strange creatures at like I kind of see it as like the grandmother to sci-fi, that kind of a thing. Um, I thought it was really wonderful to see something that odd in the yeah. reading list. Yeah, Mary Cavendish's Blazing World is absolutely an early work of science fiction by an awesome female author. I love it. Great choice. Chris, did you have a favorite? Um, I would say from what's on the list here, probably The Tempest by Shakespeare. I'm a bit of a theater nut. Uh, so that was a that was a favorite of mine and particularly like the ways in which that play encom encompasses a lot of things that are going on in the renaissance at that time so it's really interesting to read all of these works so the way that fib is structured you go through time and so all the works that you read over like a couple of weeks are all from sort of a similar time period so it's very interesting to read like the philosophy from that time period, the uh, works on politics from that time period, the theater from that time period, the novels from that time period, and to when you've read them all, see the connections between everything that's there. Absolutely. And I found that really cool about The Tempest. That's one thing that actually happens through the whole program, that you see works that you read more close to the contemporary world, or even the Age of Reason, as you can see here. Um, they build on people that you have read. So uh, particularly in uh, T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland, you, he has a lot of footnotes, so you can see different works by different authors that he's referencing. And you have read at least a third of those books that he's already referencing. So it's really cool to see how interconnected all of these major texts are. Totally. I don't know, they're, they're woven together. Yeah, absolutely. FIP is a, it's a conversation of different kinds of ideas interacting with each other. It's a journey. Uh, you start in the ancient world and you move your way through the contemporary world and you think about how uh, culture and ideas have changed over time. I think one of the cool things about FIP is it gives you a chance to really delve into the past and think deeply about what stuff from the past is beautiful and enlightening and enriching and we want to keep forever and what stuff from the past we want to get away from and move away from um, and be critical of. And FIP lets you do that, all of that. So that's a pretty intense first year experience that I'm describing here. But also everyone in the program is reading all these books together. Uh, the professors, we call them tutors at King's, are there to guide you and support you. So you're really getting a lot of support and care as you move through this program. Um, and even though this book list may seem a little intimidating at first, trust me, you got this. If you choose to do FIP, really all you need to be successful is a little bit of organization, a lot of curiosity, and a desire to do it. I, I genuinely believe in that. So, uh, sorry, I'll just go back for one second before I move on. In the Foundation Year program, 
your regular day-to-day -day life, I think I'll go back to this picture actually, uh, will be, like I said, a lecture in the morning and a tutorial in the afternoon where you can discuss and debate, uh, respectfully disagree with others, really talk deeply about what you've been learning about with these great books that you're reading. And for most students, that's your regular schedule almost every day of the week. So as I mentioned with this slide, there are four types of degrees at King's and the foundation year program is the starting point for any one of those four. So let's say you're planning to get an arts degree. Maybe you want to do something like, uh, I don't know, a combined honors in history and international development with a minor in indigenous studies. That sounds great, that's an arts degree. Um, you could do foundation year program as part of the first year of your arts degree. You would do FIP four days a week. So four days a week, lecture in the morning, tutorial in the afternoon. And then you'd have room in your schedule for one additional class. And that's all you need to complete the first year prerequisites for your arts degree. So that one additional class you choose, that could really be anything. Uh, it could be a language, for example, maybe you take first year Spanish, um, just to give you a sense of how that might look. Let's say you're doing a music degree, it'd be really similar. FIP four days a week, plus one extra space in your schedule that you can fill with a music class would be an appropriate thing to take. If you're doing a journalism degree, you'll do FIP four days a week and you'll fill that extra space in your schedule by taking a class called Foundations of Journalism. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about journalism in a minute. And if you plan to do a science degree at King's, you could also do the foundation year program as the starting point for your degree. It would give you a really great opportunity to mix some arts and humanities, books and literature into your science degree. So if you like exploring both of those ways of learning, you can do FIP science. And the thing that's a little bit different for science students is that instead of doing FIP four days a week, lecture in the morning, four days a week, tutorials in the afternoon, they actually just don't show up on Thursdays. So they do foundation year program three days a week, and that leaves two extra spaces in their schedule that they can fill with some of the important requirements that you need in order to get started with your science degree. So typically you would do FIP three days a week, and then you would take a science class and also a math class. And all of that helps you get uh, the foundation you need. That's what we call a foundation year program so that you can move on smoothly into the second year of your degree. So that's foundation year program. One of the most common questions I get is what's next? What's after foundation year? Well, the answer is first of all, going to involve our partnership with Dalhousie, which I mentioned before. Kings and Dal are very closely connected. The programs that you can see on the slide here are not a complete list of what you can take at King's and Dal. You can combine and customize your degree in a bunch of different ways. You can mix science and arts programs together if you want to. You can do journalism as a major or as a minor. A lot of the programs here can be done as minors. Some of the programs here have great co-op options, like um, this is Environment, Sustainability, and Society has a cool co-op. There's a lot of different ways to kind of combine and customize the degree that you want. So the programs that you can see that are written in blue, contemporary studies, early modern studies, history of science and technology, and journalism, all of those are unique to King's. They're special programs that we specifically offer. And all of them will get you a degree that includes the word honors at the end of it, an honors degree, um, which looks great on your transcript, by the way, if you're thinking of going to grad school or anything like that in the future. And all of the other programs that you can see on the screen like I said, not an exhaustive list of options that are available to you through our partnership with Dalhousie. So the point I'm trying to make with this slide is whatever it is you're interested in out there, we've got it. Um, and if you have a specific interest that you want to talk to us about, email me. I'll have my email address up on a slide at the end of this or email admissions at ukings.ca. We'll talk to you more. We can help you kind of figure out a degree pathway that sounds right to you. Finally, I just want to touch on journalism for a minute. Um, let's do this. I feel bad covering up, okay. So, King's is known for our journalism school. Um, we're widely regarded to be one of the best journalism schools in the country. If you're out there and you like to learn something really practical, get your hands on some equipment, uh, become a clearer, more concise writer and communicator, if you like the idea of having an internship where you get work experience, um, if you like the idea of working with professors that are going to treat you 
like you're a real working journalist uh, and not a journalism student. The journalism department offers all of that. Uh, if you want to get like a real sense of what the day-to-day -day life for our journalism students is like, I highly, highly recommend checking out The Signal. Go to signalhfx.ca. That's the in-house newspaper for our journalism school. So if you go to The Signal, you'll see what kinds of news stories are our journalists and students working on right now. What are they writing about? I'll tell you right now, if you look at the cover page of The Signal, you're going to see uh, stories about COVID-19, which is obviously breaking news. Um, and that's something that it makes a lot of sense for our journalism students to be reporting on. But you'll also see uh, science reporting, sports reporting, arts reporting, local issues, global issues, all sorts of different types of things on that page. Okay, and I can see there's already some things coming in in our chat feature. I'm gonna open it up to questions soon and make sure that I take a look at what's happening in that chat box and answer some of the questions that are in there. Um, but first, let's just talk a little bit about our campus and community. Uh, Chris, Antoinette, maybe I'll throw it over to you. What do you like about living in Halifax? Okay. Um, I really, I mean, it's a great city in that I really like, I really like the size of Halifax. I like that you have, you have everything that a city has to offer, but it is still a relatively small community. People are incredibly friendly here. Um, it's a really wonderful place to live. Um, there's tons of awesome, fun things to do around the city. I really recommend if you do decide to come to Kings to like get out, get out and experience Halifax. Um, you're like so close to the ocean all the time and uh, there's tons of fun things to do in downtown. Um, my, I, my family is originally from the South Shore of Nova Scotia, but I grew up in Ontario. Um, and so like this was a little bit of uh, coming home for me and I never really want to leave Halifax now. Um, so I really have loved uh, living in this city. Yeah. I always like to talk about how great Halifax is because one of the things that uh, probably if you're listening to this, you already know about Kings is that we're a pretty small community. Kings has under a thousand students. So it's a really tight knit place. And I know that uh, for some people, the idea of a small community is exactly what they want. But for other people, they're kind of a little worried that like you might get a little, I don't know, isolated or you might feel like you see all the same people all the time. And I just want to reassure you, it really doesn't feel that way. Our campus is right, I mean, first of all, we're right next door to Dalhousie, but we're also right in the heart of Halifax, which is super vibrant. There's a lot going on. Uh, Kings and Dal are not the only universities in the city. There's also St. Mary's, Mount St. Vincent, the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design, um, NSCC, the Nova Scotia Community College. So there's just tons of students from all around the world um, filling up the city. And it really feels like a very studenty, exciting, vibrant place to live. Yes. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Uh, one thing that I was going to say is that I'm from here and I actually didn't want to stay. I wanted to get out as most people are want to do. Um, but then I learned about Kings and then I stayed and here I am and I can't really imagine going somewhere else. Um, but one of the things that I love about this city is because it's so small and it's this collection of people. Uh, there's a really, really wonderful art scene, whether it be theater or live music or visual arts, uh, especially having NASCAD, the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design, as we only mentioned. Um, we just have a lot of creation happening and a lot of movement and change, which is really nice. Um, it means that you're not stuck doing the same things all of the time. So it's something that it encourages you to go out. It encourages you to engage. Um, every year in the fall, there's Nocturne, which is uh, an art festival at night and people, the whole city comes alive and people go out and talk and walk and see really cool art pieces. Yeah. So those are, that's one of my favorite things. And if you're 
maybe not so much an arts person, but you are a restaurant person, Halifax is a great city for you. If you're a sports person, one thing that is on my uh, bucket list right now is that I really want to go out and see a Wanderers game because I think soccer would be really fun uh, to go learn more about. Um, I'm not the sportsiest person, but Halifax has a lot to offer for students who, who are and want to discover those things. Yeah. So Halifax has uh, professional soccer, uh, has professional soccer, lacrosse, hockey, basketball um, teams as well. Like with there being seven universities in the town, there is literally always a university sports game that you can go and watch from like field hockey to football. Um, like there's tons of, there's tons of sports in the city. Um, it also, the city also has a great music scene. There's tons of really awesome small uh, smaller local bands around Halifax. We have amazing musicians. Um, so yeah, there's the city has a lot to offer if you go out and find it. Yeah. Okay, I feel like I've bragged about my hometown enough, so I'm going to move on to uh, <laughs> bragging about our amazing campus, uh, which looks like this from above. Um, so I said before, Kings is small, under a thousand students, and when you're on the campus, you really feel that closeness. Part of that is kind of set up in the geography of our campus. So it really is one square of buildings um, with a green space in the middle that we call the quad. The buildings face in towards each other. So when you're on our campus, you're always kind of looking in on each other, seeing the people you know crisscrossing across the campus, passing each other on the way to or from your residence room, your dining hall, on the way to the library. A lot of the buildings that you can see in this picture from above our residences. A lot of our first year students especially choose to live on campus. If you're an upper year student, a second, third, or fourth year, and you'd like to continue living on campus, absolutely, please do. We have an entire residence building that's set aside just for upper year students. It's all single rooms and super nice. Um, a lot of our first year students are living right here in Alexandra Hall, where there are single rooms and also double rooms. Um, there's this building right over here and here. Those are the bays, and the bay style residences are awesome. Uh, the double rooms in the bays are kind of a semi-private room. So you, you and your roommate are both roommates and you share a space, but you also have a door separating you that you can close for a little bit of a mix of that roommate experience and a little more privacy. No. So you get a lot of different kinds of residence styles on our campus. If you are someone who's already applied to Kings for this coming year, you're a student in grade 12, but you haven't applied to residence yet, I encourage you to do that now. Residence applications are open. They're available on our website. So you can go check that out. Um, a couple other important features of this, of this uh, image that you can see. Um, right over here, we've got a, a chapel space on our campus. King's is not a religious university, but we do have this beautiful chapel that has great acoustics. That's where our choir performs. And if you are a spiritual person and you'd like to explore that more, the chapel is a great place to go to meet other like-minded people. Um, the chapel also runs very cool volunteering and community out outreach programs. So there's a lot to discover there. This building right here in the top corner of the campus is called the Lodge. It's where the president of the university lives. He lives right on campus with the students. Uh, our president right now is Professor William Leahy, but we call him President Bill. And Bill lives right on campus with his wife and kids and his wonderful dog, Casey our unofficial mascot. Um, and you can see them walking around on campus. And the president of the university will invite students into his home for special events, for opportunities to meet with unique and interesting alumni who have fascinating and exciting careers, uh, and all sorts of really nice things that happen in the lodge. So a lot going on in this picture. And we'll take a look at some other places on campus as well. Oh, there's Casey. I mentioned her in the previous slide. Um, this is a picture from move-in day. Chris, Antoinette, do you want to talk about what happens on move-in day? Sure. Um, essentially, you, you arrive in some fashion. Uh, my mode of transportation was a car. Uh, and we drove in and we were kind of surrounded by people with welcome signs welcoming us to Kings. Um, not gonna lie. It's a lot. It's very busy. You have to go this way and that way and find which bay you're in or which room you're in. Uh, and you get to meet your roommate. And then all of, eventually all the parents are like hushed away. There's a barbecue, I think. Um, 
and then you kind of gather all together in alumni hall for the very first time um and it's the first time that you're with everybody and it's the first time that you're kind of you're all excited you're all nervous um it is a little bit overwhelming but in a really good way like in a way that gets you excited for the year that kind of brings a positive energy out that kind of negates the uh worries of leaving home yeah move-in day is the start of orientation week and at king's uh our orientation week or some universities might call it frosh week we call it orientation week um our university's orientation week is entirely run by students so these are people that know what it feels like to be moving maybe away from home for the first time starting a new experience and they plan all sorts of events uh starting from move-in day but move-in day and beyond for your whole first week to really help you get settled in when you arrive on campus and move-in day you'll have you know suitcases and boxes and all those things and a bunch of really helpful friendly upper year students will be available to help you carry those boxes to your residence room um, and that is a very nice feature and then you'll get to meet lots of members from the king's community like president bill and casey and everyone else will be around to greet you so that's a really nice way to start your experience casey's the most important person to me yeah, yeah. so <laughs> special um all right so that's move-in day and orientation week another thing you can experience when you start your degree at king's are a couple very special traditions including what you can see right here in this image this is matriculation so i don't think i mentioned this up front but king's is a very old university we're in fact one of the oldest english-speaking universities in the country so we have a, a long history and heritage when you arrive at king's we want to make you feel like you're part of that special tradition and heritage and so you're going to do this special ritual don't freak out it's not crazy uh the special ritual that we have been doing ever since 1803 uh and at, in since 1803 all of our students have been signing in to the university in this great big book that's called a matricula so you'll uh, put on your cool black academic robes it makes you feel like you're an extra in a harry potter movie um, and you will sign your name in this great big book that like i said we've had volumes of these matricula that students going all the way back to 1803 have signed in on and you'll also recite an oath in latin where you promise to uphold the values of communal living and learning um, and don't worry dr peter o'brien our vice president and latin scholar will be there to help you no one's going to expect you to memorize any latin um he'll be there he'll say a few words at a time and you'll repeat after him it's a very special tradition it really makes you feel like you're some part of something that's grand and old because you are if you come to kings you're part of something very grand and very special um, something that yeah i was really worried about and that all of my tutorial mates and everyone that i met was very worried about is you don't say it alone you recite the oath together as a group yeah. there was a lot of anxious nervous energy about that you say it together. Yeah, totally. It's we fun. do a lot of stuff together at Kings. We like to do yes. things together. Yeah. 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 The community is really special, and this is something that is a little bit weird, a little bit like old school, but is above everything else fun. And you're doing it with your with your new friends at Kings, and it is a good time. It's not nearly as weird as it sounds. No, I promise. Awesome. And while we're talking about special university traditions, this is a picture from Formal Meal. So I want to say a little bit about the King's Dining Hall, uh, and because that's a big part of the residence experience. If you come and live on campus, you will get a meal plan. You'll have meals in Prince Hall, which is our dining hall. You don't have to have every single meal in Prince Hall if you don't want to. In fact, your residence room will have a mini fridge, um, so you can stock some snacks in there. And there's also some communal kitchen spaces on our campus that you can use to cook food. And there's also a lovely student-run cafe called The Galley uh, on campus, an entirely student-run business that serves amazing tea, coffee, locally sourced treats, the best grilled cheese sandwiches. Um, so there's a lot of places to eat around the campus and on the campus, including uh, various restaurants and food providers over at Dalhousie as well. But our dining hall is a pretty special place. It's a place where people love to gather. And every once in a while, uh, a couple times every semester, we do this special ritual called formal meal, where once again, our students will put on their awesome, very Hogwartsy black academic robes um, and we'll dine together. We lay out the white tablecloths. 
and you have candles and flowers on the table, so it feels quite special. The professors will sit at head table. Usually there'll be a keynote speaker who has something inspirational to say. It just feels like being with family, and that's an amazing experience. Um, do you guys have anything you want to add, Chris and Antoinette, about formal meal or? It feels very experience? fun. Uh, it's yeah, it's very fun. It does very much feel like you're going into a banquet at Hogwarts uh, with all the robes. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's a good time. They usually bust out like really good food for formal meal too. Um, like our dining hall food has a, is actually quite good in general. Um, it's it's pretty good. It's better than back when I was in first year. So uh, if we're on an upward curve, uh, and uh, they make they make a special effort for a formal meal. So like formal meal meals are usually very good as well. I love the food in Prince Hall personally. It's kind of a treat for me. Oh, yeah. And I will say that there's also a, a ton of different food options. So if you mm -hmm. are vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, our dining hall can always accommodate you. Um, there's always going to be options for you. There's a salad bar that's lovely and healthy. There's literally also always pizza and ice cream. So, you know, it's a choose your own adventure. Like, I'm not saying you're going to have salad every single day. That's, that's yeah. your call to make. But um, yeah, there's a lot of different options for your needs. Yeah. There's also uh, something that is part of the improvements that have happened since I was in first year. There's like a little pantry in, uh, in the dining hall now as well, where like you can go and like make your own, make your own meals. Like there's a bunch of ingredients that are just there for you to make like omelets and stir fries. They have like make your own waffles in the morning, which is awesome. Uh, yeah, like in, in general, Prince Hall is like very good food and good times, yeah. So I want to move on just to get through a few more slides before we just open it up for whatever questions you'd like to ask us. One important thing I wanna make sure we touch on are scholarships. 95% um, of the students who come to King's are getting some form of financial support from us. I'm going to talk about scholarships right now, but scholarships uh, are just one way that the university provides financial support. We also have bursaries. So the difference between a scholarship and a bursary is basically this. Um, a scholarship is given to you to recognize uh, usually academic achievement um, or other factors about you. Sometimes uh, scholarships go to students who have really stood out because of their commitment to volunteer work and leadership. Um, so we have a bunch of different kinds of scholarships that are uh, given to acknowledge students on the basis of those merits, um, like their academic achievement and other factors about them. And then bursaries, on the other hand, are just based on financial need. So if there is support that you need, uh, especially if you're a student who's going to be getting a loan to finance your education, you can apply for a bursary as well. And so between scholarships and bursaries, 95% of our students, like I said, are getting some form of financial aid from us. There are basically two key types of scholarships at King's. The first kind is called a general entrance award. And general entrance awards are basically based on your academic average. Um, then they will range from $2,000 to $3,500 per year. They're renewable, which means you can keep getting them uh, after your first year. And then along with those general entrance scholarships, we also have uh, major awards. And you can see a list of some of the major awards we offer here. The thing with these major awards is that um, they have all sorts of different types of criteria. So the Donald R. Sobey Family Scholarship, for instance, that's our most valuable scholarship. It's valued at $50,000. Um, that will go to a student with very strong academic achievement, but also very strong leadership and volunteer background. Uh, some of them have other different criteria. The King's Theatrical Society Award is going to go to a student that's very passionate and involved in theater. The Colin Starnes Award, that one's just earmarked for a student from Nova Scotia. The Deborah Dean Little and Robert Little Academic Scholarships for Varsity Athletes, the name probably gives this away, but that is for an academically inclined student who's doing foundation year program, but is also doing varsity sports with us. The Prince Scholarship, that one is earmarked for African Nova Scotian students. The Carrie Best Scholarship is for uh, Black or African Canadian or Indigenous students. So there's all sorts of different options there. You can read a full list of the criteria um, and application process for these scholarships on our website. And the deadline to apply for these is usually around January 15th uh, in the year that you apply. 
Um, the deadline to apply for a major entrance scholarship, like I said, is January 15th. But with those general entrance scholarships, you're going to be automatically considered for one of those as long as you apply by March 1st. So there's lots of options there um, for ways to access scholarships and bursaries at the university. And, oh, right. <laughs> My next slide is about what you do with all of this information, where your degree is going to take you after you graduate. And the answer to that question is kind of anywhere. There's a lot of places that you can go with your King's degree. Um, up on this slide, I have some faces and jobs of some of our graduates. Um, my buddy Ben Langer is up here. He and I were King students around the same time. He did a science uh, degree. He did a combined honors in biology and history of science and technology. And today he's a family doctor. Uh, we also have some really fascinating journalists and reporters who went to King's. We've got a picture up on the slide of Laura Armstrong who's a sports reporter with the Toronto Stars. She covers the Blue Jays. We've got people who work in government, like Gwyneth Cross, people who are academics and scholars, like Ao, uh, who is a professor at the University of Texas, and people in the world of business, like John Harrison, who's a VP at Google. So there's all sorts of cool King's alumni out there in the world doing interesting things. If you want to see where King's degree can take you, if you want to learn more about what jobs our graduates are doing, I would encourage you to visit ukingscommunity.ca to see full profiles on all of these people and many, many more um, and learn about where they went with their degrees. And I feel like this is my last slide coming up. Oh yeah. One quite special and new thing at King's is that uh, we just last year um, formed a brand new partnership with our friends at the Faculty of Law, the law school at the University of Calgary. Uh, they love what we're doing with Foundation Year Program at the University of Calgary. And if you do Foundation Year Program and complete your degree at King's um, with a scholarship standing GPA, you're provisionally pre-admitted to the law school at UCAL. So uh, we know that a lot of our graduates are interested in law, would like to consider pursuing that as a career path. It's just really nice to know that there's a kind of streamlined pathway directly from King's into one of Canada's best law schools uh, if you'd like to pursue that pathway. All right, I'm gonna leave this slide up for a little while. Um, this has my contact information on it. So if you have specific questions that you'd like to ask me and you don't necessarily wanna type them into the chat box, you can always email me, but I would encourage you now, um, in the time that we have left, if any of you want to ask anything at all about the university that you want me, Antoinette, or Chris to answer, it can be about an academic program, how our degrees work, residences, clubs, societies, you can type those things into the chat box right now, and we'll do our best to answer. Do I have any info about study abroad is the first question on the list. Perfect. Um, okay, I do have info about study abroad. Chris, Antoinette, did either of you do a study abroad program, by the way? No, I'm okay. a baby. <laughs> Perfect. I did not do a study abroad, so yeah, uh, what's on the screen right now. So there are plenty of study abroad programs that are offered through Dalhousie University that you can, uh, that you can take as a King student as well. Uh, you can also do one of King's two study abroad programs that are offered within the uh, departments of early modern studies and contemporary studies. So the one that's on the screen right now that Yoli has up is the Berlin trip that is in uh, that is there, that is in May. They usually offer offer these courses on alternating years, and so the Berlin trip bleh, the Berlin trip is through the Contemporary Studies program. Um, and the title of it is Memory, Politics, and Place. So it uh, talks a lot about um, memorialization, ways in which uh, Berlin and Germany generally have uh, worked to, uh, to memorialize the past, which is a difficult topic within Germany given the history of the 20th century. Um, my partner, uh, Rachel, who is actually on the screen in the top, 
corner there, uh, did this trip. So I heard a lot about it from her as she was there. Um, pretty much daily while she was there, I would get a text being like, this is so cool. This is so much fun. We did this awesome thing. Uh, so the, uh, the King's uh, study abroad programs are pretty sweet. Um, and then do you have a slide of the other one? I do, yeah. So there's um, a great course in Germany and another one in Florence, um, Florence, Italy, which is a class on early modern art, literature, and politics. Um, this is the one that if I could, if this had been offered when I was a King student, I absolutely would have done. I loved the idea of learning about art history in Italy. I love that you could be talking about Michelangelo's David while literally standing in front of it. I think that sounds totally incredible. So the Berlin class and the Florence class are both great options for study abroad, but there's also over 90 study abroad options offered through partnerships with Dalhousie. So if there's a program you're interested in, a thing you want to learn, a country in the world you want to go to, whether it's for a field course like this, where it's just one class taught abroad or a full semester away, there are tons of options. Um, and you can explore them more through Dalhousie's International Center. Cool. So that was a question about study abroad. Um, yeah. Is it hard to keep up with readings uh, in, the FIP, in FIP uh, while playing on a varsity sports team? So I played varsity rugby while I was doing foundation year program uh, in my first year. Um, it is a lot. Uh, you do have a lot of practices. You have a lot of uh, commitments to varsity sports and I will not lie to you FIP is a lot of reading um, but it is something that is manageable um, it requires a little bit more organization and but the main thing that I'll say about this is that a lot of the people who are going to be on your varsity sports team with you either did FIP or are in upper years programs and have been through the first year program have been through the foundation year program or have been through first year and are doing uh, and are doing things and are are doing things similar to what you're doing in FIP and are super willing to help. Um, so, like you know, you do have to put a lot of time towards varsity athletics. But then, I remember in first year, I would be riding back on buses from going to play games or tournaments, and my friends on the rugby team would be passing my laptop around, uh, editing my foundation year program papers for me and like providing feedback for me. Um, and like I remember coming to practice and the guys on my team with me who had done FIP would like ask me about what we were reading right now and I would talk about what what we were reading and they would offer me things of like oh you should check out this or like or I would say oh I don't really get this and they would help explain stuff to me so yes there is a it is a lot to be a varsity athlete and to be doing foundation year program but you have tons of supports academically at King's and your team you will find is a huge support for you in that way as well. Yeah, the Blue Devils community are a really tight knit community on our campus. The athletes who play on our teams really support each other a lot. And I just wanna give a shout out to, to our director of athletics, Neil Hooper, and the team that works in the athletic department with him. Neil is literally the nicest man in the world. Um, and uh, last year won uh, the top athletics director in Canada. Um, and he's just very, very motivated to make sure that our student athletes can balance the academic side with the athletic side. Um, I know that uh, one kind of stereotype or thought that people have about being an athlete at university is that people are gonna treat you as an athlete first and a student second. I do not think that's the way it works at King. So we really treat the students as students first. Um, and that is really important because your academic achievement is uh, the thing that we're all striving for. Next question on the list is when do you typically find out when you are accepted into residence? So we're processing through the residence applications we have right now, um, but residence rooms and roommates are usually assigned in July. So you will for sure find out about what room you're in, who your roommate is. Uh, and the nice thing is that um, rather than it being like an automated system that chooses like who is your roommate, you're like, oh, like, I know John submitted their uh, roommate or their like residence application at like 1030 and Josh submitted theirs at like 1035 and you're together. Um, they're actually handpicked. Uh, people who work in our FIP office and who work in our student support uh, services actually go through all of the applications and um, it's a really thorough um, uh, 
application that you fill out and you're, you're asked things about what type of music do you listen to? What time do you go to bed? So that really and truly they're able to put the best uh, pairs together. I have a friend who, I say this on all of the tours that I've done, but I love him a lot. He is very, he's kind of crazy. He's a lot, he's a lot to live with. Absolutely wonderful. Um, but one day I was sitting around and I was trying, and my brain was going through all the people that he could have lived with and it would have all fallen apart, but they were able to like match him with the perfect person and they still live together and they're best friends and they're able to make these really, really wonderful pairings of people um, that you really just do create really wonderful relationships with. That being said, uh, if there are issues with roommates, uh, Katie Marone, our Dean of Students who lives on campus, uh, there's always something that she can do. There's always something that, that uh, things will be with quickly and there will be conversations. Um, they're really, really good about listening to students and to thinking about um, what would be best going forward. Uh, but overall, last year, like almost all of like all of my friends love their roommates. I had one complaint from somebody about their roommate, and that was it. So like, they do a really good job. If you're listening to us talk about this right now and you're thinking, uh, I don't want to have a roommate, that's not for me, I will mention there are single rooms on campus. So you can absolutely request one of those when you fill out a residence application form. But don't be totally closed off to the idea of having a roommate. That's a great experience to have. It's totally worth it if you're open to it. It's a great way to form a community right away, make a friend right away, uh, feel supported. Um, and we will earmark and kind of give first preference on our single rooms to students with a documented medical need. The next question is, if there are no equivalent clubs or sports at King's, can we join Dalhousie societies? Can I take this Great one? question. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. Um, any Dalhousie society or club you have access to as a King's student and you can join. So like if there's a club or society at King's that you, or if there's a club or society you want to be part of that isn't at King's, you can join the anyone at Dal, no problem. Sports teams are a little bit different um, and it is dependent on the level that the sports team is playing at. So if they are a, uh, if they're a, I forget exactly what the distinction is, but there is a varsity, varsity level sports teams, I'm pretty sure um, as a King's student, there are certain restrictions around what you can play at Dow. It is dependent on the sports team though. So like I'm a King's student, but I sail on the Dalhousie sailing team um, because the rules around that are slightly different than say King's students playing on the Dalhousie football team. Um, and so, but so also if Kings has the varsity sport, uh, you can't play the one at Dal, you're on the Kings team. But yeah, uh, Yoli, you can probably speak to this a bit as well. Yeah, I mean, partially this is because Kings and Dal are different size institutions. We actually play in different athletic leagues. Yes. Um, so typically if you're, uh, when it comes to varsity sports, if you're a Kings student, you play for a Kings team. And if you're a Dal student, you play for a Dal team. Um, but all of the other types of clubs and societies that are out there, you have access to everything that's at King's and at Dow. Um, the next question on the docket is how and when do new students register for courses? Great question. If you are an incoming student, registration will be in June and you should keep an eye on your mailbox because we will send you lots of information about how to register. Um, you'll have great helpers like Chris and Antoinette who are peer supporters, peer advisors to help you register. We also made some very useful YouTube tutorials. There's some video tutorials that walk you through the registration process. Um, so all of that information will be coming your way before registration opens in June. Do either of you want to add to that? Yeah. Uh, sure. I, when I registered for my first year, the Dell Online website can be an intimidating beast. Um, use the videos. The videos are really, really helpful. Um, it really alleviated my stress and my like anxiously like trying to like go through the website. Um, they're really and truly very helpful. And this is me before I was a peer advisor and before I was at King's.
Um, our next question, are there uh, travel ab abroad and co-op options for programs other than journalism? So the journalism program has the internship. Uh, there are travel abroad options that we uh, just discussed. Um, there are co-op options with programs that are offered by Kings and Dow. Um, there are traditional co-op options like sustainability has co-op options where they'll pair you with uh, NGOs and not-for-profits that are uh, doing work in sustainable fields. Um, but then there are also non-traditional co-ops like in theater you can do an apprenticeship with a local Halifax theater company and have that count as part of your uh, theater degree. Um, and there are tons of options for study abroad and co-ops at King's and Dow for all the program that you might be interested in. Um, so there's so much available to you. This is a great question from someone who asked what resources are available for mental health. Excellent question. I have a lot to say about that. First of all, there's an actual health and wellness center where you can talk to doctors, nurses, psychiatrists, psychologists, through our partnership with Dalhousie. Um, but not everyone always wants to talk to a medical professional. Sometimes you just wanna to talk to a friend, someone who understands, someone who can support you in a more directed way. Um, and so we have a peer support system at King's um, where you can go in and talk peer to peer to someone who has a lot of training in active listening, who knows what resources are available around campus and around the city that they can support you to. Your mental health is a huge part of your overall health. Um, and we really understand how important that is at Kings. Um, Chris, yeah. Antoinette, can you think of anything else that I should add to this important question? Um, I was just gonna add as well, when living in residence, you know, coming and being away from home for the first time can be very difficult. So King's has a really awesome residence support network in place. Um, our Dean of Students lives on campus. Our Assistant Dean of student lives, Students lives on campus. At King's, you also have something called a Dawn. This is different than an RA. Dawns live in your residence building with you um, and are they're primarily as supports for you and for your peers in their particular residence. Um, we also have something called Patrol at King's, which is a, a group of students who are on campus uh, in the evenings and are there to uh, be a support network for students. And uh, Patrol, uh, I worked Patrol for a couple of years, you get lots of training around mental health concerns and active listening, and uh, you are there basically just to be a peer who can be called on at any time to help with any situation in residence. Um, you're, they are always available. There's also Alex Hall Front Desk, which gets the same training and is staffed by students, and again is a place where you can go and uh, be able to speak to somebody who has peer support training and is oftentimes in their second or third year of university is dealing with similar things and knows what it is like to have gone through living in, gone through uh, having lived away from your parents and all the normal stresses that come from university. Yeah. And to, to add on to that, um, Dons, we have junior Dons who are university age students, but then we also have Dons that are two or more years out of their undergrad and sometimes they're doing their masters or PhD or they're working in the community and uh, they aren't there to be your parents, but they are there to be a support, as Chris was saying. Um, from my own experience, my Dawn last year, who I absolutely love, I adore her, uh, all the days that we had fifth essays due, she would open her door and have tea uh, and just have an open space for people to come in. Uh, if you knocked on her door, she would always answer and just be there, whether or not that was to address a certain issue or just to hang out or just to be a support. It's really nice to be able to talk to somebody who isn't a professional and they aren't uh, your peer, but they're also, there's still that relatability and they still get it. Um, it's nice to talk to somebody who like is a step or two removed so they're not fully, they've seen the other side. They're on the other side of it, like they they know they've had some life experience, and that's really comforting to have. 
Um, there's a question here about FIP science students and the workload and if it's difficult to keep up. And this is, I think, uh, kind of similar to the question about if it's hard to keep up with FIP if you're doing things like being a varsity athlete or if it's hard to keep up with FIP if you are doing things like a lot of theater or if it's hard to keep up with FIP if you're doing things like um, working a part-time job. It is true that FIP is a lot of work. It's a first year intensive course and you will find ways to fit it in alongside the interests that you have. For FIP science students, it is a slightly different structure in your week. Um, as I mentioned before earlier in this, in this uh, webinar, FIP science students do foundation year program three days a week and then they have room in their schedule for two other courses, usually a science and a math. Um, we were very interested this year in learning a little bit more about the experiences that our FIP science students are having and how they feel about the workload. So we actually did a survey this year of all the students in FIP science to get their feedback about how it is and how the workload feels. And one of the main responses that came out of that survey were students telling us, yes, it is a little more work. It's a different kind of work. The things I'm learning in my science and math classes are challenging me and testing my brain and stretching my knowledge in a different way than the things I'm learning in foundation year program. But a lot of them said it was totally worth it. They were really excited about having that well-rounded first year where they get to explore science and also the arts and humanities and be able to combine those interests. So I don't want to mislead you or make it sound like, oh, it's just gonna be a breeze, because it won't be. It's going to be a rigorous uh, and intensive first year that will challenge your brain, but it's a good kind of challenge, if you know what I mean. The kind of challenge that makes you feel like you're really gaining something, really getting valuable skills that are going to be useful for you as you move forward in your degree. Um, so if you're feeling a little nervous about the workload, you know what, actually, I'll just say this, shoot me an email after this webinar, I will find a FIP science student and put you in touch with them. I think I, I, think I can say we can do that. Um, okay, another question is, if we apply for residence now, how likely is it to get a place in residence for a first year FIP student? It's likely, definitely apply for residence now. I would encourage you to do it now. Um, we're processing residence applications now. But if you're a FIP student, we'll find a place for you on the campus. So I was just curious, is most of the work handed in digitally or should it be printed off and handed in? I'll let one of our so, students handle this. Both? It, it's both. Uh, with FIP papers, you submit them on what's called Brightspace, uh, which you'll get once you come here. Uh, but then you also need to print off your uh, FIP paper and run it upstairs to the FIP office before 1020 in the morning. Um, you'll never be alone in that journey, I will promise you. Um, but that's just so that the profs are able to give you direct feedback, uh, typing it up on a computer and like putting it in like with Word or whatever isn't the same as having someone go through your work with like a pencil or a red pen and just start highlighting and working through your work. Um, I like even though it is a little bit of an extra step to print off all of your things, I found it always really rewarding to be able to print off my essay, hold it in my hands and hand it in. Um, and you don't need to bring a printer with you if you don't have one. That's no. okay. We've got lots and lots of printers in the library in the computer labs. Um, don't worry about that. Your roommate might have one. It's Your roommate might have one. That's true. Um, the next question on the docket is, are there co-op options for history majors? This is a great question. There is no formal co-op program for history at this time, but there is something really cool which I encourage you to check out. Um, history is part of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. Sometimes we call it FASS, F-A-S-S for short. And there are a lot of people out there that uh, are interested in FAST and are interested in getting, kind of getting into it, you know, doing things like internships, co-ops, getting their hands dirty, really experiencing what they're learning. We call this experiential learning. Um, and if you check out FAST X, uh, F-A-S-S, E-X at DAL, you can learn a lot about the experiential opportunities, experiential learning opportunities throughout the entire faculty of arts and social sciences. Um, that Kings and Dal share. And that's a really cool thing. I'm going to see if I can pull up um, more information about that online. 
for you to show you where what I'm talking about. Fast X, DAO, um, lots of really great ways to kind of get involved. Oh, here it is, Fast Experiential Learning, DAO has a university. So since Kings and DAO share the entire Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, all of the information on this website are relevant to both Kings and DAO students. Um, yeah, with different kinds of experiential learning opportunities for people who love the arts. So you can um, read more about that there. I would have foundation your program. It's a 3.3 uh, and forward beyond foundation your program. It's a 3.7 to maintain the King's recurring scholarships that you get from entrance. So if you went, if you'll leave, you can go back a couple slides. There are the general King's entrance scholarships that are, oh yeah, nope. the general King's entrance scholarships that are based on your average from your high school classes and then leaving foundation or program 3.3 beyond that a 3.7 to maintain those. Um, and then other program, other scholarships like the major awards, um, there are very different criteria around renewals of those um, that you need, they are specific to each of those awards. Okay, there's a question here about what kind of different vibe do each of our residence buildings have? I love this question. Um, Antoinette, do you have an answer for this one? Um, yes. So ours, uh, one university that I really think of as having particular vibes is X or Acadia, um, which are other schools in the Maritimes where they have like different houses. King's doesn't have that. It changes every year. Um, along with residence application process uh, our behind the team workers do create it so that like one of the bays may be a little bit louder one of them's a little bit quieter but it's never it is not the same year after year there is no set uh legacy that you have to work into um like for example Cochrane bay is one of our bays on campus and in my year it was really quiet like really just like low key and apparently this year it's like a very active engaged uh community of people they like to host people um but that's the thing the vibe is whatever you choose it to be really and truly sometimes yeah. katie merwin our dean of students when when she's reading through all the residence applications will kind of put together people with a sort of common set of interests or theme so I know that in, in some years, she's uh, kind of put a lot of musical people together um, in the same residence, kind of created the, you know, the music area. Um, and this really speaks to how important it is when you're applying for residence, that when you're answering that questionnaire, um, just be really detailed, tell the truth about who you are. If you actually are a loud person, if you actually are a quiet person, if you actually are kind of a messy person, you know, tell the truth about who you are. Um, I know that this should be obvious and I, I don't mean this to sound you know patronizing or anything but if you have a parent or guardian that's really supporting you in the application process that's awesome but do not let your parent or guardian apply to residence for you like you should absolutely do that yourself um, and tell the truth about who you are so that you can be matched up with the right roommate um, and the right residence building uh, that's going to have that vibe that fits who you are The next question here is, are the varsity sports teams just Kings or with Dow? Um, yeah, so, I, yeah, go ahead, Chris. Um, so the Kings varsity sports are varsity men's and women's rugby, varsity men's and women's soccer, uh, varsity uh, co-ed badminton, uh, varsity women's bad, uh, volleyball, and uh, am I missing something? Soccer, basketball, rugby. Well, men's and women's basketball as well. Um, and so uh, those are not shared between uh, Kings and Dow. Those are Kings teams. Um, but then as I was saying earlier, there are certain sports uh, that Kings students can participate on the team at Dow, um, uh, but that doesn't go the other way. The next question on the docket is what types of things should you consider if you're trying to decide between Alexander Hall or the Bays? Great question. Um, Alexander Hall and the Bays are two kind of different styles of residence room on our campus. If what you're looking for is a single room, 
there's not really a huge difference between these choices. Um, but if you're thinking about a double room or roommates, uh, then there is a bit of a difference between the look and feel of a double Alex Hall room and the look and feel of a double room in the bays. And I'm gonna let um, Chris and Antoinette talk about that a little bit more. I'm gonna see if I can pull up the floor plans from our website to provide a visual representation of what I'm describing. Um, um, yeah. So the bays, I guess it's uh, Ale Alexander Hall, or we call it Alex Hall. Um, it's definitely more traditional style residence. So if you're going and looking into our other universities, they have single rooms, they have double rooms, two beds in one room, very normal. Uh, our bays are kind of our specialty. Uh, it's uh, a central staircase and a landing, which has four rooms. And if you open the door into one of those rooms, there is a bed with a desk and a, yeah, and a lamp and a chair and a dresser and a closet. Um, and then there's another wall and a door and you go through that and it's the exact same. Uh, you both get your own mini fridge. Um, in a bay, you really get to choose when you have uh, social time with your roommate. Um, in the in the like Alexander Hall, you don't. Um, bays definitely are the best of both worlds, I would say. Yeah, yeah they're different styles of residence living for sure. Um, in terms of the amount of actual space you have, they're very similar. Our residence rooms all have great big wide windows to let in not a lot of natural light. You're going to have Wi-Fi, whichever residence you choose. You're going to have a dawn to support you, whichever residence you choose. You're going to have common areas that you can hang out in, whichever residence you choose. But the main difference between Bays and Alex Hall with the double rooms is down to the floor plan and the way it's laid out. So you can find that information on our website. And um, I would say, even with the traditional rooms, um, I did tours all last year, I've done tours all this year. Uh, when people have come in and seen our Alexandra Hall uh, double rooms, they always remark how big they are co in comparison to other traditional rooms. All of the rooms have really tall ceilings. They're really large. Um, They're like, very large. Particularly, like, I, I have lots of friends who went to Dal and went to other universities in the Maritimes, and, like, King's Res rooms are big by comparison, yeah. When do you get your confirmation offer of your entrance scholarship? So um, we've passed March 1st now, which is when we start uh, being able to assess people for entrance scholarships. So the answer to that question is soon. You will get it soon. Um, if you've applied and you're waiting for information about your scholarship, the answer is soon. But I also just want to say, obviously, we're living in an unprecedented moment right now. Um, the staff from my office, the registrar's office, which deals with admissions, scholarships, we are working in a little bit of a different way than we're used to. We're working from home. Um, and so some of the things that we uh, normally would be doing at this time of year are taking us just a tiny bit longer than usual. And so I just want to say, if you're waiting for information, um, I know that that can be frustrating. Believe me, we're, we're working hard uh, on our end. And if things take a little longer than usual, I just want to thank you in advance for being patient with us. But if you have any questions about the process, if you are waiting for information from us and you don't know where it is right now, email admissions at ukings.ca. We will get an answer to you. Uh, so next question, does FIP cover course requirements for a humanities degree if you want to transfer to Dow? So as a King's student, as we said in the earlier in the presentation, uh, Kings and Dalhousie share the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences and the Faculty of Science. So if you're interested in doing a humanities degree at Dal uh, with Kings, um, you have the ability to take any uh, humanities related program that you want to take at, uh, at Dalhousie University. And uh, with a foundation year program, uh, it serves as three, uh, it serves as fill, fulfilling most of your general degree requirements out of your uh, first year. The only general degree requirements for a humanities related degree uh, that foundation year doesn't cover are a language and a science. Um, so by doing foundation year program, even if you are like, I'm gonna go and do history, which is a Dalhousie department, and that's what you're gonna do for the rest of your undergrad, you A, are, 
positioned perfectly to move into those second year history classes. And B, you don't have to go through a transfer process uh, to Dalhousie. We share those faculties. Uh, you don't have to transfer at all. Grades okay. once you're attending, um, in foundation year program, you're assessed uh, based on an essay that you write every two weeks. Um, and it's on the topics that you've done, uh, that you've been studying and the works that you've been studying. Yoli? Um, yes, I, uh, that's absolutely right. So in foundation year program, um, assessments are based on mostly essays. Um, there will be one midterm exam that you'll write each term that's gonna be short answer questions, kind of multiple choice style questions. And don't freak out when I say this, there will also be an oral exam at the end of the term. And I know that that can sound intimidating, but the oral exam is actually great. Like you go into a room, there's two faculty members there. There are people who you know well because the King's professors and faculty really know the students really well. And then you just talk to them about books uh, for like 15 minutes. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Um, it, it sounds like an intimidating thing. It really isn't. My oral exams went super fine in FIP. Uh, and it's really nice because the, all the King's tutors are very supportive people. Like I stumbled a bit on a question that I was asked and they were like, hey, take your time. Or if you want, like, we'll ask you a different question. Like, that's totally cool. Um, so like, it's a very supportive process. It is not a process designed to intimidate. And it really allows you to talk to your strengths. Um, mm -hmm. If they ask you one question, but you're able to switch it into something you're a little bit more comfortable talking about, you have a lot more freedom to do that. Where if you were doing like an exam, exam there will be less space, less time to do that, but because you're the one directing the conversation. Um, and honestly, like, like most of the time, the friends that I had when they went into the exam, the process asked them, what do you want to start with? Like, what would be something? Yeah, which is really, it makes for a space that is not intimidating, mm -hmm. even though it may seem that way on the outside. Um, the next one on the on the list is about whether you can defer and whether we have early admission. So I'll talk about these two things separately. So let's start with deferrals. A deferral is when you've been accepted and admitted to the university, but you decide that you'd like to take a year uh, and do something else for that year. Maybe you want to work, travel, volunteer, and then attend. Um, and we absolutely can defer your offer of admission. In order to defer, uh, you will still pay your admission deposit, which is $200, to hold your spot in the program for the following year. And you also do have to write a quick email to admissions at ukings.ca to request the deferral and let us know why you're planning to defer. And we'll accept your deferral for whatever reason, really. I mean, if you want to travel, if you want to work, if your circumstances have changed, if you have a, a family member that needs care and support and you want to take a year to care and support to care for them and support them, you can defer for any of those reasons. The only reason that we won't accept for a deferral is if you want to go do another academic program at another institution. If you choose to do that, you would have to reapply to King's as a transfer student so that we can make sure that we're understanding your full academic record um, and taking into account those classes that you took at that other institution. So yeah, you can definitely defer. You would email admissions at ukings.ca to request that. The other question that was there about wh whether or not we have early acceptance. Um, so we start assessing applications as of October 15th, um, and that is earlier in the fall. So in that period, that early admissions period in, in the first half of your grade 12 year, when you apply, you will um, give us your grades from grade 11, and you'll provide us with a list of the classes that you're taking in grade 12. And we'll use mainly your grade 11 marks to make a prediction about how grade 12 is going to go for you and offer you admissions based on that uh, predicted grade. So that's how the early admissions period begins. And I just wanna to say to the person who's asking this question about early acceptance, um, I'm not sure if you're a person who's writing to us from somewhere in Canada or perhaps from the United States, but I just wanna mention that in the United States, when they talk about early admissions, they, they use that terminology in a slightly different way than we do in Canada. So uh, if you are an American student and you need a little bit of clarity about what I mean, I'd like you to give me an email. Uh, 
and uh, I can help to kind of explain the difference between the early admissions process, what we mean by that in Canada, versus how that term is usually used at an American university or college. Okay, perfect. I think this is the perfect time for me to talk about what classes we actually require for admissions and how we would assess someone for admissions um, to help answer this question. So I'll just go back here, right? Um, so students who are applying to King's are going to be applying for one of these four types of degrees, arts, science, journalism, or music. When we are looking at your classes that you've taken in high school and your grades to make an admissions decision, we're going to look to see five grade 12 level academic classes on your transcript. Um, for all of these programs, uh, we need to see, we're gonna look at your grade from your English class or your literature class or humanities class, whatever is the thing that's most obviously an equivalent of an English class. Um, for arts, music, or journalism, the grades that we're interested in for admissions are English and the next four best, the strongest academic grades that you have. So English and those next four best classes, those are the ones we average together to create your admissions average and assess you for admissions. And for science, we're gonna be looking at English and math and your next three best. And when I say math, what I mean is a kind of pre-calculus or calculus level math. So if you are unsure if the math class you've taken is uh, right or acceptable for us for admission to a science program and you'd like to know for sure, you can email admissions at ukings.ca and uh, I can give you more detail. Um, sometimes, depending on what province, state, country of the world you live in, the exact names and course codes that people use to describe these different classes might vary a little bit. Um, so, you know, here in Nova Scotia, I, I might describe these as grade 12 academic classes. If you're a student listening to me right now and you live in Ontario, I would say the classes we're looking for are the ones that are coded for you or for M on your transcript. Those are the ones that are acceptable for university admissions. If you live in any other province, any other place, you can shoot me an email and I can give you a little bit more specific information about which courses on your transcript uh, we would consider for admissions. If you do FIP and then major at Dow for the next three years, do you get a King's or Dow diploma? This is a great question. Um, Chris, take it away. So when you are a King student and you do a program with Dalhousie, um, you can get, as a King student, you can end up with three types of degrees in terms of how they look on a sheet of paper at the end. So the first is if you're a journalism student, uh, you get an entirely King's degree. It is entirely in Latin, which is super fun. Um, and it has the King's crest on it and then explain and then it has all the normal degree stuff. Um, if you do a combined honors degree between one of the King's programs and uh, one of King's upgrades programs, so that's CSP, EMSP, or host, and a program at Dalhousie, you will get a, you will get a degree that on the piece of paper, there will be the King's crest and the Dow Crest, and it will say uh, Dalhousie, or the University of King's College and Dalhousie University jointly award the degree in blah, blah, blah to blah, blah, blah. Um, and then if you are a King student who does a major honors program entirely at Dow, um, so they say you're doing theater at Dalhousie um, or music at Dalhousie, your degree will have the Dow crest on top and it'll say Dalhousie University awards the degree in blah, 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 a student of the University of King's College. Uh, uh, and then at the bottom of that, it'll have a smaller King's crest and the signature of our president on it as well. Um, I hope that does an okay job of explaining this. Um, you can reach out if you have more questions about that, but regardless of the degree you get as a King student in conjunction with Dow, you will 
it will be represented on your degree in some way that you are a King student. Totally. The short answer is that King's and Dell are two universities that are so interconnected to each other and entangled with each other that we have the power to jointly confer a degree, which is a really special and unique thing. I will say from my own experience, I went to King's and I got one of those combined degrees that had a King's crest and a Dell crest on it side by side. And for me, I felt like this was a huge advantage when I was applying for competitive graduate programs. I went out and looked for uh, master's and, and uh, doctoral programs, um, and I eventually chose one at a school in the United Kingdom. Um, and it was really great being able to have the partnership of these two universities uh, on my transcript and on my academic record, because sometimes I would be applying for programs and Dalhousie uh, which is a fantastic place, is a little bit better known than the University of King's College is. We are a smaller institution at King's, so not everyone knows that we're around, but a lot of people know about Dow because it is a fantastic and very highly respected place. And so it was really nice for me as a King student to be able to have all of the advantages of the unique style of education at King's but still be able to talk about how my education also came from Dalhousie University. And I think that really helped make me stand out when I was applying for competitive grad school programs. So that's a really cool thing to keep in mind. Um, uh, one thing I'll say is that because you're still a King student, you will graduate in uh, our graduation ceremony in Insignia. Um, even if you, correct me if I'm wrong, even if your degree is more DAL heavy. Um, mm -hmm. You get to graduate along with your peers, along with the people that you've like gone through this whole journey of FIP and the next couple years of your degree with, which is really nice. Yeah, if you are a King student, regardless of the academic program you have pursued, you graduate at the King's uh, Insignia. Um, there's a question here about do we have any other assignments to complete while doing FIP other than the essays every two weeks? Um, yep, there's the essays every two weeks and then there's that one midterm exam each term and that one oral exam that we talked about each term. And that's it. The only other assignments you there's have. No homework. Yeah, no there's homework. No, homework. No. no. There's nothing like that. You have to stay up on your readings. Um, but there's no like small homework assignments or anything like that between the essays. Yeah. So the only other assignments you'd be responsible for are in um, another class that you're taking alongside FIP. So just for clarification, I talked about this earlier in the webinar, but most students will do FIP four days a week and have room in their schedule for one additional class that they're taking. Um, the science students, it's a little different, three days a week, two additional classes. So you would be responsible for the work that you're doing in that other class or other two classes alongside foundation your program. You might have assignments or tests in those classes. But generally with FIP, it really is that simple and that straightforward. The essays are the main way that you are assessed in that program. Um, one other thing about FIP assessments though that I sometimes forget to mention, uh, we do expect you to attend and there's a very small percentage of your grade, which is actually based on participation. So you should go to your tutorial. It's a great way to learn. It's a really nice community to be in. Um, and it is important that you're there. Whether or not you feel like talking or sharing or um, expressing an opinion in tutorial, that's up to you. But you should actually show up. There is a little bit of a grade that's based on that. I must say tutorials are so much better when you can talk. Um, it definitely like like people are really, really understanding about if that's something that you're comfortable with and that it's something that you have to like wait, like wait around for. Or maybe it doesn't happen all the time, but um, don't be afraid. Like really and truly talking in the tutorial is one of the main ways that I learned from my classmates throughout FIP. Um, tutorial is a really special time and you will more likely than not actually want to go. It's a little bit of a social time. It's a little bit of a what happened in lecture, what was this book, and then you also get to hear from these really, really intelligent, smart, and more often than not funny uh, tutors. Um, yeah, go, go to tutorial. It's good. Um, the next question on the list is about how applicants are evaluated for admissions. I talked about this a little earlier with us uh, looking at at grades on your transcript to make the admissions decision. One thing I'm going to add, I just noticed that the person who asked this question to me is a fellow named Will, and I know for a fact that Will is a student who's looking at Kings and who lives in the United States. 
Um, hi, Will. I hope things are okay in Massachusetts right now. Um, but I did want to say that uh, grades are the main way you will be assessed for uh, admission to a program at the University of King's College. There is an, um, if you apply for one of our major scholarships, uh, part of the application process would be writing an essay. Um, and so that is uh, something that would be considered as part of the scholarship application rather than the regular admissions application. And I just wanted to highlight that because I know, especially in the United States, often the application process will always involve writing an essay or sending in letters of reference or other types of supporting documents. Um, on our end, it's actually much more streamlined. Grades are the main tool we use to assess you for admissions to the program. Um, but there is that essay component for the scholarships. And also, if you're looking at our journalism program, you will submit a short piece of writing as part of your journalism application. We call it an autobiographical sketch or journalism sketch. It should be no more than 1,000 words long. Um, and that journalism sketch should be an opportunity for you to talk about who you are, what you're passionate about. Um, maybe tell us a little bit about why you want to be a journalist. Keep in mind that the Journalism Admissions Committee is really looking for people who want to tell stories because that's what journalism is all about. And they want to be able to communicate storytelling well. So use your journalism op a sketch as an opportunity to tell us a little bit about yourself and tell a little bit of a story about who you are and why you're passionate about journalism. And then the last question here is, is Halifax good for student housing beyond first year? Um, both of you live in Halifax and no longer live in residence. Do you want to address this one? Uh, uh, I'll go. Um, I, generally, what I've heard from friends of mine is that they have had very positive experiences with landlords in Halifax. Um, there is tons of student housing available. There's tons of housing that is like very much geared towards students um, in the city. Uh, because it is such a uh, university town. Um, yeah, lot, I mean, yeah. yeah. A lot of the neighborhoods that students choose to live in are very close to our campus. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, maybe, but well, this is gonna be hard to see in this picture, but Kings is right over here. Dalhousie is our neighbor on three sides. And then on the other side, if you kind of cross the street, uh, you'll cross a street called Coburg Road. And if you just continue walking along that area, um, you're going to be in a neighborhood that has a lot of student housing in it. But one of the things that I really like about Halifax, and I've traveled all across Canada to uh, meet with future King students and seen a lot of different cities around the country. One thing I've noticed is that sometimes if you're in a city that's known for its universities, um, you'll find that there's a little area in town where the houses are not very nice but rent is really cheap and it's kind of where all the students live, but it's really run down and shabby. And I don't think we really have that problem in Halifax. So there's a big neighborhood where you'll find that a lot of students live, but it's not really like a student slum neighborhood. It's, it's a nice neighborhood. There are regular houses with lawns and families and dogs and elementary schools and barbecues and like all the stuff that you want to see in a regular residential neighborhood. Um, and it's super close to campus. Most King students who live off campus are a short walk or short bus route um, from the campuses. So it's, uh, it's just a, a nice environment to live in. And, and Chris, I'm so sorry, I think I cut you off as well because I got really no, no, tight okay. on talking about how the facts. <laughs> the city's yeah. really beautiful. It's a very nice town. Like uh, you, yeah, there's good opportunities for student housing. There are also resources through Kings and Dalhousie available to help you in finding student housing. Uh, beyond first year. Absolutely. I know that um, for me, when I moved uh, into a student housing, I, I moved to this great little house on Yale Street with my roommates, Kat and Michelle, who are still my favorite people on the whole planet. Um, love them the most. And we, we found that house because previously there were other King students living in it. But yeah. when they graduated, they needed to pass over their lease to someone else and they picked us and then we moved in. And when we left, we passed that house on to other King students. And so you'll find that there are a lot of properties in the city um, that are great houses to live in with landlords that know they're renting to students and respect that and will pass through generations of King students. And yeah. that is its own kind of special thing. Um, oh my gosh, I think, I think we got through all the questions and I'm feeling <laughs> like, whew. 
That was a, that was a marathon and it was very exciting. And I, I want to thank everyone who asked questions for um, putting yourself out there and sharing what you had to say. I'm going to put my contact information back up here one more time. You can email me. Uh, if you want to talk to me, you can text me. Um, you can email admissions at ukings.ca for general information about admissions or about your specific application for your specific provinces or states or countries admission requirements. Um, any of that is a great way to reach us. And again, I really want to thank you all for spending this time. Uh, it's been really nice to be with you in this virtual space. And I hope everyone out there is staying safe, healthy, um, taking good care of yourself and being kind to the people around you. Uh, this is a very unusual time, but it's really nice to know that we're out there being able to be part of this community together. Chris, Antoinette, thank you so much for being my partners um, here in this webinar.